Hey team, welcome back to my channel. Let me begin with a quote by Edsker Diskra. If debugging is the process of removing software bugs, then programming must be the process of putting them in. We're going to use the debugger GDB and we're going to debug this program. But before we start, let me just show you a few things. If I say cat cmp.sh, Here's the script that actually compiled this program from source code to object code to executable. Now, minus G puts a bunch of debug information inside of that file for us. So if we say cmp.sh, that file has been created. We can now say file on this guy right here, cmp, to see if the debug information is in there. So cmp and notice with debug information. We're good to go. Now the program has compiled, I'm going to show you four ways to start up GDB. So GDB, the most simple is CMP. And notice we get all this copyright license and no warranty information. That's way one. The second way is GDB minus silent in the name of our executable. Enter. Notice it bypasses all that information about GDB and we're ready to start debugging. The third way is GDB minus two minus silent compare and notice it pops in and we're automatically into the source code, which is pretty nice. Sometimes when debugging with GDB, we will get the error 126. You can see I went to Google and typed in GDB error 126 and we got several responses, permission denied. Let's work around that. The first thing we must do is become super user. So say SU, what is your password? And once we're there, we can say sudo gdb in the name of our program. There it is. Step one, make sure you're in your root folder. Notice my root folder is home v box user. Now our goal is to create a file called dot gdb init. This file stores custom gdb commands. Now storing this file in our home directory allows any folder under this root folder to use these commands when using GDB. Now a GDB command is not your traditional function in a programming sense. They let you automate repetitive tasks or create more complex debugging routines. Here you can see my routine show flags. It prints out the value for each flag after a function like compare is executed. Let us figure out the default display assembly inside of GDB. So when we begin, we say GDB minus silent minus two and then CMP. And then we can say a layout ASM, layout regs, and then start. Notice that we can see here that we are using the AT&T syntax by default. Now to change that, all we have to say is set disassembly flavor and then Intel. And then when we hit a step, notice that it switches the code over. Now, how can we start up GDB in the Intel syntax? Let me show you how. If we change directory back to our root folder, ls minus al, do you remember this file .gdb init? Let's edit that, vi.g. And now we can actually put a default uh, startup disassembly. So set disassembly flavor, and we're gonna say Intel. Let us now load GDB to see if the default syntax is in AT&T by default, or did it switch over to Intel? You can clearly see that the default assembler type has changed to Intel now. Let us use GDB and debug our first very simple app. So we say GDB minus silent CMP, and then you begin with start. Notice start makes a temporary breakpoint and stops us at main. And then we're gonna say TUI enable, and then we're gonna say a layout ASM, and then we're gonna split screen by holding down control and X, and then we're gonna say layout reg, now, when we start stepping through this SI, you'll notice that we have the registers and we have the source code below. Well, now that we are on line uh, 401116, 
you can see that we're going to move 7 into register 11. And then I'm going to do a compare instruction. So I'm just going to hit enter because the last command is SI. And now I'm going to do it one more time. And now we've executed the instruction CMP, compare. And do you remember our command called show flags? Notice that this is telling me uh, each of the flag names. And for the JGE instruction, we need to look at the SF flag and the OF flag. For the JGE instruction to jump, the SF flag must equal the OF flag. And notice 1 and 0, well, they are not equal. So this will just continue. So SI, SI. SI. Now you can see here that I have loaded the same values into my R10 and R11. What I would like to do is actually move a different value into R10. And we can say set dollar $R10 equals 7. Now once we do that, then we can see that we have uh, the same values. But let's now go up here and R10 is 7, R11 is 7. Or we could have came here and said info reg R10, R11. Now when we do this compare uh, SI, notice that the our flags have been set. So how do you do that? Show flags. Now SF is 0, OF is 0 they are equal. That means this, is, this expression is going to jump all the way down to uh, 4011.3f. That is down here. You'll see this ready. Let's do a SI. And notice it jumped. Pretty amazing. In lesson 9, I wrote a program called swap.asm. All it does is swap two numbers. In this part, we're going to learn about breakpoints. Now, how do we even see what breakpoints that we can use? Well, there are two commands that kind of aid us. The first command is nm, nm, and then the name of our O file, so swap.o. And then we're going to use the grep command, so grep. And what are we going to look for? Well, we're going to look for a space. And then if there's a capital T or a little t in that line, then we're going to use that. So hit enter. And notice that I was able to get out this capital T or little t's and show the name of the labels. Does that make sense? Now here you can see that I have main, show nums, and swap nums. Now you might be noticing I have another file called bp1. Well, those are my breakpoints. If I say cat bp.1, notice I say break main. You can see that here is a capital T and then show nums and swap. So we can automatically load GDB with these breakpoints. Let me show you how to do that. Notice that we can preload GDB with a list of breakpoints. So GDB minus X, the name of our file, then silent and then swap. Hit enter. And notice these breakpoints have already been set. Now we can say start, then we can say info breaks, and guess what? One, two, three, all done. To add another breakpoint and use the actual address, all you need to do is say break star and then the address. So 0x401194. Notice that that created this breakpoint right here. Now, if I list all my breakpoints again, info, break, to remove our breakpoints, all we say is uh, delete, five, info, break, and notice five is gone. And instead of using the keyword delete, we could have just used D. I can say D1, and that will make that go as away as well. And those are your breakpoints. And there you have it, team. 
an introduction to debugging an assembly language program in GDB. Now, I showed quite a bit in this video. You'll have to practice to become the master. Now, if you have questions or comments, leave them below. And I'm asking as a favor, if you found this video useful and learned a thing or two, a thumbs up, sharing it with an amigo, I'd appreciate that. Until next time, take care.